Lastly, if we put our like parts together, we've got 1 minus 4, that's making a negative 3. We've got a minus 2i and a minus 2i. How much does that give us? Negative 4. you done? Negative 3 minus 4i. Do you feel okay with doing this so far? All right, let's look at the next problem. Do you remember the relationship between this type of a complex number or this type of a complex number? Do you remember this, this relationship? We, we talked about it before. However, I was using roots at that time. I was using those roots. Now, in, in fact, do we actually have any roots up here? Yep. We do. How much is i? It's the what now? Square root of The square root. So that's a square root, right? Yep. And that is also a square root. Do you remember the relationship between this and this? Yes, I know. But what was that called? I know the middle terms probably are going to cancel out here, right? Because I have different signs here and have the same. Some people said difference of squares. That's what I would give at the very end of this problem. But say it again. Conjugate. Conjugate. Remember that? Conjugate. There? It's conjugate. It was a conjugate that we had. We have the same exact terms. It's just the sign in the middle is different. What that did with our roots. What that did with our roots was basically eliminate the square roots out of our problem. Because we knew this. A number times a number is going to give us a number. We knew a root times a root would eliminate the root, give us the radicand. That was for the square roots. But those middle terms will be off by a sign. That allows you to cancel them out, cross those things out, because when you add them together, they make that zero. Do you remember doing that? Now, let's see if it works here. It should, because we still have square roots. We're just writing them as i's. Let's see if it works. So distributing, can you all tell me what's the first thing I'm going to get? 36. OK, keep going. What's the next thing I'm going to get? Minus 30i. Min oh, not 30i. Yeah, that's right. Minus 30i. Do you see where we're getting the minus from? Plus 30i. Plus 30i. Great, OK. Minus 25i. Great. Positive times a negative. That's a negative. All right, minus 25i. Don't forget that i squared. That's going to change your problem, right? Don't forget that i squared. Do you see anything interesting that's going to happen? Yeah, they do. I've got a minus 30i, and I've got a plus 30i. That's what happened with those conjugates before. That's what's going to happen with these conjugates now. We do have 36 minus, from our t minus 25i squared, I can write that minus 25i squared is negative 1. You see where we're getting this minus from and the negative 1 from? Mm -hmm. Are we going to add or subtract 25 to 36? Add. Add. Yeah, this really means that. And that really means, wow, that's weird. Look at that. We started with this. We ended with a whole number. Isn't that kind of crazy? Mm -hmm. We eliminated the roots. I's are gone because I squared is negative 1. If you don't remember that, you're going to end up at this part, right? You're going to have some sort of negative i squared up there. It's going to look weird. It's not going to be the number. You would still think in your head you have a root when, in fact, you don't. Would you raise your hand feel okay with the multiplication? Okay, I'm going to give you a couple problems on, their own. They, on your own. They go very quickly, but I do want you to show your work on this. Don't just do them in your head. That's where the mistakes with those negatives happen. I have a question. If you were to write that as a complex number, you would have plus 0i, right? Yeah. Yep, and that's because right here, when you have negative 30i and positive 30i, how many i's do you end up with? Zero i's. <laughs> okay, try these out. Let's see how you're doing. <clears throat> Let's 
so we know we're multiplying. Wherever we get an i times an i, we're getting i squared, but then we know we can't leave this with an i squared. The i squared becomes negative 1. Distribute where you have to. Remember, this is different than adding and subtracting complex numbers. So on your test, I'm going to give you adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing complex numbers. None of the math is too difficult. You just have to know what to do, what you can do, and what you can't. All right, we're about to get going. About to get going up here. Let's look at the first example. We've got negative 4i times 5i. The first thing we're going to do, instead of doing this in our head, we're going to write out exactly what we have when we multiply. So negative 4i times 5i, I know I can multiply those numbers together. And since I'm multiplying, I can also multiply the, the i's together and get an i squared. That's because multiplication is associative. I can reassociate terms. I know that we do the 4 times the 5, it's negative 20. I do the i times the i, and I get i squared. Did you get that far? Yes. Did you leave it? No. Did you leave it? No. Oh, I hope not. Are you ever going to leave an i squared? No. Yep. You do have negative 20, but the i squared actually means negative 1. It's the square root of negative 1 times itself, or the square root of negative 1 squared. We you know any square of a square root, gone. We get negative 1 out of that. That gives us positive 20. Yes, no? Yes. All right. Next up, we're certainly going to have to distribute. This is different than if I would have had like a plus in the middle of that or a minus in the middle of that. There, that would be a different story. I wouldn't be foiling that. I would just be distributing the negative to the last two terms and then combining like parts. So you need to see the difference between addition, subtraction, and multiplication. They're all going to have parentheses around them. They're all going to have parentheses. But you need to know if there's a sign in the middle of it, addition, subtraction, that means you're not distributing. That means you're just either changing signs and combining like parts or dropping parentheses and combining like parts. With the multiplication, then yes, of course we need to FOIL this because I'm taking these two terms times these two terms. If I do that, it'll give me 12 minus 2i plus 18i and finally minus 3i. And I'm not going to forget that i squared because it had the i times the i. Raise your hand if you got exactly that on your paper. Good deal. We'll change any i squareds that we might have. Here, I can't change these things. I'm not going to even touch them yet, really. But I am going to change the i squared into a negative 1. That's our definition. We need to stick with that. So really what we have is 12 minus 2i plus 18i and then plus 3. Do you see where the plus 3 is coming from? Mm -hmm. We'll combine our like parts. Real parts come first. That gives us 15. plus 16i. Again, we don't make an i squared when we're combining like parts there, only when you're multiplying i times i. That's as far as we can go, you're done. That's it. Now, our last one, just want to make sure that you see this one more time. Of course, this really means 3 minus i times 3 minus i. Ladies and gentlemen, are these two things conjugates? No. Mm -hmm. Is the middle terms, are the middle terms, going to cross out? Now we have the same sign. The conjugates, those had different signs. That's where those middle terms were being eliminated. So when we do distribute this, very similar to the last problem, we get 9 minus 3i, but a minus 3i again. That's why we're not going to cross those middle terms out. It's because we have the same sign. And finally, plus i squared. So far, so good? Well, we know we definitely have to change any i squares that we see. So what this does, well, how much is that? Negative one. Yeah. So really what that means, I know I'm writing lots of steps, but that's kind of the, one of the keys here. The math isn't hard, you just have lots of negatives. Because of those i squares, that means negative one. What that does is really, instead of plus negative one, really just gives us minus one. Plus negative one is just minus, it's like you're subtracting. We'll combine our like parts here. We'll get 8. We'll get a minus 6i. Real part is 8. Imaginary part, negative 6i is certainly a complex number. As far as we can go, raise your feel okay with our multiplication so far. Good deal. Now, we are going to talk about division. Here's how division is going to look for you. You're not really going to normally get a division sign like that. Instead, your division is going to look like 
that. Does it still mean division when I have a fraction? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Eliminating the denominator like we did last time. So we do have some division up here. We've got two complex numbers. First one, of course, is the three plus i. Second one, two minus three i. Now I want you to think of something. You've actually already done a problem like this before in this class. You actually already have. Why? How much is i? Square root, it's a square root? Yeah. It's a square root, you believe me, it's a square root, right? Yes. It's not a negative one, it's a square root. So have you already done something where you had a root over a root? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the conjugate problem. You've already done that. In fact, in order to divide these problems, it's very, very similar, in fact, it's, not, it's so similar, it's exactly the same thing as rationalizing. Do you remember rationalizing in 10.5? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You multiply by the... One person does it? <laughs> well, we all I'm all talking. I can participate. You multiply by the yeah. uh, silence. You multiply by the conjugate. conjugate. Yeah. The conjugate. We multiply by the conjugate because we know that from our last example of multiplication over here that those conjugates are going to eliminate the middle term and in fact eliminate all roots that we have. And we do have a couple roots. We have one here that's not going to go away. But this one is. So to divide, we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. Well, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. So the first thing I know I'm going to do is multiply just like we rationalized with our roots. We still have some roots. They're only in I form, which is great for us. They're even easier to work with. It's kind of nice. Now, the conjugate of, do we want to get rid of the I on the numerator or the denominator? What do you think? So that's what you're going to rationalize. If I'm dividing, I want to get rid of this part. I want to make it so that I have one complex number at the very end of this. So when we do it, we go, oh, okay. Well, I need to find the conjugate, not of this one, but of this one. That's where I'm trying to eliminate the i. So what is the conjugate of 2 minus 3i, please? Am I going to have anything up here? The same thing. Exactly the same? Yep. I'm not going to change this side again, am I? Otherwise, that wouldn't be 1. And what you're doing here is you're multiplying by 1 in a special way. If you multiply by 1, it doesn't change the value of your complex number. It doesn't change its value. It's just making it look different. What are you going to do now? Oh, hey, that's why we, we cover multiplication before division, right? So we know how to distribute things. So when we distribute, we're going to have problems just like this all over the place. we got one on the top, we got one on the bottom. Now the one on the bottom here, the one on our denominator, what's going to happen to your middle terms? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're conjugates. That's what we, I just showed you over here on the previous example. So when we distribute, well, we're going to kind of do this quickly since we should have the hang of it at this point. We're going to get 6 plus 9i plus 2i plus 3i squared. We're just distributing. We're foiling that out. On the denominator, we're going to get 4 plus 6i minus...